DORs, what's going on? Mike Boers with the Mike Boers channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking boats today, and in today's video, the step by step process on how to properly and safely reinstall an outdrive to your boat. All right, DORs, we're at the workstation, and it's on the other side of the jet ski. Check that out. And my mom and dad's jet ski 2003 Sea Dew GTX in house for the winter for DIY repair videos. And we've got a lot of projects ahead. We're excited about that. Let's head to the workbench. Making our way around the jet ski. Hey, if you're into skateboarding, definitely check out the links down below. We show you how to build your own custom logo skateboard, as well as mount them on the wall. And DIYers, here is our Alpha 1 Gen 1. And we are just shy from installing it back onto the transom and boat. It is fully rebuilt, top to bottom, and everything in between. And coming to the workbench, our exact serial number service manual schematics and we've got several o-rings and seals that we will also install as we put that out drive in and down there is the gasket and you'll see that as we work through the project always busy here however we are going to grab our Marine Grease 24C and High Performance Extreme Grease. And DIYers down below in the comments section as well as the description section will be links on where to purchase those grease options. All right, DIYers, we have made it outside and to the detached garage where our boat is. And we'll continue taking it inside the garage and to the aft or rear portion of the boat. Making our way to the back of the boat, and there is our outdrive again resting on the stand and just patiently waiting to be installed on the boat and the transom and bell housing. At this point, I've got the trim rams hung by bungees, as shown here. And that will come into play as I put the outdrive on the bell housing and transom and secure it. And by hanging them up, I'm going to slide the outdrive basically underneath the trim rams and into place. And that will alleviate me having to disconnect any portion of the opposite end of the trim rams as I do this project. Coming around to a closer view, let's go inside the bell housing and U-joint bellows. As you can see, there is the newly installed gimbal bearing and directly behind that are newly installed gimbal oil seal. And all the way inside there is the engine coupler splines. I'm gonna give you a decent view. Not really sure if it'll zoom in, but there it is. And coming down to the shift shaft, this is a newly designed setup that we installed. Let's go underneath. And this shoe right here, you want to make sure it is positioned as shown. And this is in the forward gear. And in the event that I had it offset like that, the outdrive shifter will not be able to line itself up and slide right into this connection. They will not be able to mate and it will be impossible to secure your outdrive. So again, make sure it is positioned as shown here. Let me give you a better view. And coming back, and let's go to the outdrive. And this is the shifter that is on the outdrive itself. And make sure that this is positioned in this manner. And this is in forward gear. And what that does is it actually, again, aligns that to allow it to shift right into the connection point of the bottom fitting of the shift shaft. And in addition, it locks the prop to the left. I'll show you that now. To the back of the outdrive where the propeller is, and again, if I rotate the propeller counterclockwise or in the reverse rotation, it is locked in place. See that? And at this point, all the internal gears and mechanics are configured in a way to, again, alleviate the propeller going in reverse. And that is the configuration we want to be in prior to installing this outdrive onto the boat. In addition, it's important as you shift this outdrive onto the transom and bell housing to secure it, you are not going to rotate the propeller in the forward motion or clockwise because what that will actually do is it will offset the shifter on the opposite end of the outdrive. I'll show you that now. Back to this side of the outdrive where the yoke shaft and U-joint assembly is, and I'm going to carefully set the camera down. And we are focused now on that shift shaft that again feeds into that bottom shoe of the shift shaft on the bell housing. And right now, again, if I move the propeller counterclockwise, that shifter does not move. However, the second I rotate that propeller clockwise or in the forward motion, you will see this shifter move. See that? It is now offset and will literally be impossible to line up with the lower shift shaft guide on the bell housing, making it literally impossible to get your outdrive fully installed with the yoke shaft flush with the back wall of the inner engine coupler. So I'm going to turn the propeller counterclockwise as I move this shifter back to a straight position. And there we go. 
I've now repositioned the camera underneath the actual bell housing and transom assembly. And again, I want to focus on this little shift shoe or shift slot. And again, it needs to be positioned in this way. And that will actually be in forward gear when it comes to sitting in the captain seat and positioning the throttle. What I'm going to do now is hop into the boat, into the captain seat and shift it to neutral and show you what that will actually do to this mechanism as well as the slide up top. As you can see, it is now offset and the slide has been pulled in. And again, in this configuration or position, it's going to be impossible to install your outdrive. What I'll do now is hop back inside the boat and shift it back to forward gear. We are now back in forward gear and again, properly configured to install the outdrive. Going back up top, DIYers, let's redirect our attention to the brand new gasket and rubber O-rings. And this is our large bell housing gasket. And the little O-ring is for our water tube. And the larger O-ring will actually go on top of the upper unit retainer nut. I'll show you that now. And a quick reposition of the camera. And again, this is the inside of the bell housing. And here is that large rubber O-ring. That is actually going to go inside here and go all the way flush with the little stop point or machine cut inside the bell housing and I'll slide that all the way back now to a close-up view as you see there and again there's a machine cut inside the bell housing where it makes its beveled up lip and on its way inside where the u-joint bellows are I'm going to take this out because I want to show you where this goes when the outdrive is secured we are now looking at the upper unit of the outdrive with the universal joints and the yoke shaft and here are the two o-rings on the yoke shaft itself and again i'm going to grab that large rubber o-ring and shift it up and around the u-joint assembly and it is going to basically rest flush as shown here on the retainer nut and that is going to prevent water sneaking inside here and making contact with the u-joints inside the bellows that would destroy them. That would not be good. We are now back looking at the bell housing and internal portion where the gimbal bearing is and the U-joint bellow. And what I'm going to do now is grab my Marine 24C with Teflon. And down below in the comment section, as well as description section, will be a link on where to purchase this. With the cap off, it's a tan color. I'll just grab a little bit. Not a lot. Just shown here. And all I'm going to do is lubricate basically the ridge portion around the entire circle that the O-ring is going to secure against. And this grease is going to help keep that O-ring in place as I slide the outdrive in. And I'm using this specific grease because DIYers, this is the exact grease that our exact serial number service manual calls for. And you don't want to overdo it. And from here, I'll grab the O-ring and carefully slide it into place all the way flush with that back stopping point. And again, this is going to alleviate water from sneaking past this section here and into the U-joint bellow where the U-joints are, as well as shaft, as well as your gimbal bearing. And if that happens, plan on premature failure of all of those parts. I'm now going to insert some grease inside the machine cut that the water tube O-ring is going to seat inside. And again, this is going to help keep the O-ring in place as I ship the outdrive on and secure it. No reason to get messy, no reason to add too much. The biggest thing is you want it there. And I'm going to just clean up the outer surface as well as go inside the insert where the water flows through and make sure I don't have a pile of grease in there. That would not be good. And now to the water tube O-ring and seat it right nicely inside that little insert. And use some of the grease that's being pressed out on your finger to lubricate the outer portion of the O-ring as shown here. Next I'll go back to the larger o-ring and I'm going to lubricate the edge or surface of the o-ring closest to us as shown here. And DIYers you might see people use bellows adhesive and I will be honest that is the last thing I am going to use because again our serial number service manual does not call for it. And DIYers in the event that the engineers thought that that would be a better option they would have issued a memo or a service bulletin informing all owners and technicians and marine shops of the change. 
And in the event that you have not seen a memo or service bulletin, it is a newly step-by-step -step guidance on a brand new engineer design part, which is a modification from the original, and as much helpful info about that modification and newly designed part as possible, as well as all of the guidance on how it operates and how to uninstall it and install it. And again, there's no memo or service bulletin on our exact serial number service manual that informs us that Bellow Adhesive is a better application on the O-rings than 24C. So again, just keep that in mind. Next, I need to remove all six of these 5 8 nuts and washers. And very important, this bottom nut and threaded stud has that grounding washer that works in lieu with the anode kit to alleviate corrosion. Next, I'm going to grab this large bell housing gasket and carefully align it on all of the threaded studs as shown here. And real quick, I'm going to take this off. I want to show you something. Again, Alpha 1 Gen 1 in our case, we do not have an oil feed here. However, Gen 2s and Bravos do. So this part right here is irrelevant to us, but it is still on the gasket. And in your case, if you have a Gen 2 or Bravos, just make sure you are installing this bell housing gasket properly. In addition, same thing to the bell housing gasket. I'm not going to apply any adhesive nor any lubrication because again, our serial number service manual does not call for it. Back to the Marine Grease 24C, I am going to lubricate all six threaded studs, and this is going to help alleviate any of those nuts and washers from getting seized down the road. I'm pulling this back out, I just noticed a washer on the back side, I need to take that off, that's important, and carefully back on. At this point, all nuts and washers are accounted for. And now let's direct our attention to the shift cable slide, as well as the shift mechanism that guides the lower bushing and shaft. And in a previous video, we lubricated this section right here, and that is going to be in constant movement as you shift from neutral to forward, back to neutral, onto reverse, and back to neutral. So again, you want to make sure that this portion here is lubricated with that 24C. And DIYers, at this point, the entire bell housing, O-rings, and gasket, as well as the lower shaft down there, is properly prepped and configured and ready for the outdrive. From here, we are going to lubricate the shaft of the outdrive and install it. We're now looking at the outdrive and the yoke shaft and U-joint assembly, and again, the Marine Grease 24C. I'm going to lubricate this section of the shaft where the O-rings have been installed. And you can tell where the shaft itself changes colors and that's the section you want lubricated. This section from here to this o-ring is basically out in space. In other words, fully exposed at all times. And this o-ring right here is again for the newly designed engine couplers. In our case, we don't have that, which at that point, this o-ring becomes completely irrelevant. However, in the event that you have not seen this setup or you just purchased a brand new shaft and your old shaft did not have that machine cut and o-ring, definitely check out the link scrolling above. We give you a full tutorial and explanation on this new machine cut and the newly designed engine coupler. We will also post that link down below in the comment section Section, as well as the description section. So again, just lubricate these O-rings and this portion of the shaft. And I'm going to reposition the camera because we need to lubricate the upper unit. And after that, we will change to extreme grease per our service manual to properly lubricate the splines of this portion of the shaft feeding into the engine coupler. At this point, you're looking at the upper unit. And again, this whole section right here that the retainer nut feeds into and the internal gears and bearings on the back side of the U-joint assembly needs to be lubricated with Marine Grease 24C. And if your service manual states to lubricate it with something else, I highly recommend you following your service manual. And again, we are just going to apply some grease to this entire section. And this is going to help the outdrive from getting seized down the road inside the bell housing. That's not what you want. And DIYers, do not get sloppy with it. Just go slow, be precise. Don't get grease where it shouldn't be. That's just my recommendation. Back to a better view of the entire U-joint assembly and yoke shaft, I'm going to lift this up and this shift shaft right here, you want that lubricated with 24C, as shown here. 
At this point, everything that needs to be lubricated with Marine Grease 24C has been properly lubricated. It is now time to shift gears to high performance extreme grease as shown here. And down below in the comment section as well as the description section will be a link on where to purchase this. And I'm going to pick up the shaft and I'm going to apply a good amount of this high performance grease all the way around the entire shaft. And from here, just work it into the splines and do not get any of it on the tip portion of the shaft. That could actually work against you as you shift this out drive and shaft into position inside the coupler. The grease itself under compression may push back and not allow you to properly shift this entire shaft into the coupler, if that makes sense. Now that the spline is properly lubricated, I am going to go back to this O-ring right here. And again, in the event that you have a newer engine with a new and re-engineered coupler, go ahead and apply the 24C to the O-ring. Not a lot. And again, in our case, it's completely irrelevant, but I wanna show you how to lubricate it. At this point, DORs, everything is properly lubricated and the outdrive is ready to go inside the transom and secured to the bell housing and bow. All right, DIYers, I've got the outdrive off of the stand and it is ready to be shifted inside the bell housing, gimbal ring, and transom and secured to the boat. And I'm going to carefully lift up on the trim ramps as shown here and slide the outdrive forward. And DIYers, bear with me, I am not a strong guy. From here, I'm going to maneuver the yoke shaft into the bell housing and guide as straight as possible inside the gimbal. And as you shift the yoke shaft and spline portion through the gimbal bearing, be very careful not to apply any offset weight to the gimbal bearing itself, because in the event that you watch my alignment video, you know that that could easily throw off the alignment. In addition, you may need to push down on the bell housing or pull it up slightly. Verify your gasket's still in place as well as your O-ring and the shift shaft slide. From here I can take these bungees off the rams, set those up. Verify again that the shift shaft is properly configured the gaskets in place as well as the rubber o-ring and from here just carefully shift it into place and shown there and at this point all six threaded studs are exposed and i'm going to begin installing the washer and 5 8 nuts for each of them do not cross thread these onto the studs and diyers you just saw the importance and benefits of properly aligning your engine prior to sliding this out drive onto the boat if we were unaligned, it would not have gone in and on that easy. In addition, if you've got it all the way in and there's about a half inch gap in between the bell housing and upper unit, go ahead and carefully rotate your propeller counterclockwise as you simultaneously push in on the back side of the upper unit. And that ever so slight rotation of the prop counterclockwise should align the yoke shaft splines in a way where it will slide into the engine coupler. I'm just hand tightening these nuts. I will torque them here shortly. Now to port side and the top stud, and again, just hand tightening only. And last but not least, the starboard lower washer. Again, this is a grounding clip or washer, and I'm going to take the painter's tape off. The reason I had that painter's tape on was to alleviate the screw from going missing during the project. Next, I grab my Phillips screwdriver, which has a magnetic Phillips bit on it, and I'm going to align the screw inside the hole and tighten it in place. Now to the nut. 
Next, my Craftsman 3 8 ratchet and 5 8 socket. I'm going to tighten all six of the nuts. However, not super tight because I need to grab my torque wrench and torque them to 50 foot pounds per our exact serial number service manual. And as you tighten these, go in sequence, starting with the two center bolts on both starboard and port. However, if your service manual states differently, follow your service manual. After the two center nuts, I'm going to come starboard top and tighten that nut. Next, port side lower nut. Next, port side top. Last but not least, starboard bottom. Now it's time to transition to my Craftsman foot-pound torque wrench. And again, our serial number service manual states 50 foot-pounds. And I've set 50 foot-pounds and locked the tool in place. I'm going to start with starboard center and secure it. And I'm going to tighten this until the tool itself makes a clicking sound. And at that point, the nut is properly torqued to 50 foot-pounds. Go slow. Do not rush this portion. There it is. Now to port side center. And again, 50 foot-pounds. There it is. Now to starboard top. And I'm going in the exact same sequence as before. Port side bottom. And the bottom two nuts are going to be tough. I added a very small extension to the torque wrench. Port side top. And again, last but not least, the starboard lower nut. Hold my Craftsman stool in place. I'm now sitting at the very aft portion of the out drive and just double check everything. And if all looks good, we are going to resecure the trim rams to the out drive itself. And as you can see, the connections are not really lined up. So basically I have to pull on the back side of the out drive. And by doing that, it will come right into alignment. See that? And another quick reposition of the camera. I'm doing my best to give you a good view of this as I reinstall the rod that goes through each trim ram and locks the out drive in place. And here's the parts. I'm going to take off my plastic caps. I'm going to hop to the opposite side here and separate all of my washers. The two inner washers will go inside this section here and the two outer washers will be on either outer edge or portion of the rams. And I'm going to unscrew one of the 5 8 nuts and in the event that you get these washers mixed up, the outer two washers are thicker than the inner washers. And in addition, the outer washers are not capable of sliding onto the larger diameter rod, as these ones are. From here, I'm going to grab that high-performance grease and lubricate this entire bar. And as always, no need to overdo it. Just apply a thin layer of grease and spread it evenly all over the bar. And this is going to help alleviate corrosion over the years, as well as help you install it through each of the rams and the outdrive, as well as when it comes time to reservice the outdrive and pull it off, it's going to make it easier to pull this rod out. From here, I'll dry my hands. And in addition, I grab my two outer bushings. I'll grab one and I'll insert it with the smaller portion in here. And I'll insert the rod and slide it through to a point where it lines up and I'm also going to lubricate the inner bushings. Not a lot, just a little. Next, I'll insert the bushing accordingly and slide the bar through. And from here, my respective washer, and I'll grab a paper towel to help me pick up the out drive and center it accordingly. As shown there, and holding the out drive with my knee, I'm going to push the bar through. And you really gotta maneuver the out drive as you simultaneously shift this bar through. And it's coming out the opposite end. Grab my respective washer, 
put it on as shown there lower the ram and turn it and same thing maneuver the outdrive in a way where it lines up and can be pushed straight through and this one's not lining up After each nut is tightened, go ahead and clean up any of the grease. Now to our cap and DIYs. In our case, we have plastic thread inside these caps, and they need to be carefully, without cross thread, screwed on tight. However, your outer plastic covers may just be tap-ons, so just take a good look at the inner portion of the cap to see if you have thread. Now to my adjustable wrench, and you want these pretty snug, but do not over tighten them. They are plastic. Now to a close-up view coming underneath the outdrive, I do want to show you the shift lever as shown there and the two mating together. Check that out. I got the camera set back and just double check every single thing DIYers and if all looks good, we're going to hop inside the captain's seat and trim the outdrive up. At this point, the outdrive is further away from the ground where I can continue working on it throughout the projects without damaging the lower skag or propeller. And DIYers, that's it. That is how you install your Alpha 1 Gen 1 Mercruiser outdrive. And for your convenience, what we will do next is film a video on how to properly and safely realign and recalibrate your trim sender and trim limit switch. And if you remember correctly, on the starboard side is your trim sender and on port side is your trim limit. And right now, we have not realigned or calibrated the brand new trim sender and trim limit switches that were installed in previous videos. And that is what we are excited to do next. And we will have that link scrolling above right now as well as down below in the comments section and the description section so DIYers definitely check that out we hope this helps now to the top view DIYers and in addition down below in the comment section as well as the description section will be a video link on how to actually replace the entire trim rams both starboard and port side brand new trim rams will be nice because over time unfortunately they can leak right in that section right there and you're going to be that guy with the boat at the sandbar with an entire fuel oil ring around your boat and that will definitely draw the wrong attention to you. At this point, we hopped inside the boat where the inboard engine is, and let's go to the back or aft portion, and I wanna do my best to zoom into the shaft. As you see there, you can see the O-ring that serves absolutely no purpose to our setup. Again, Alpha 1 Gen 1, and we do not have the newly designed and engineered coupler. Let's hop to the other side. On the opposite side where the exhaust pipe is, and let's go to the back side of the exhaust and down. And right there, you can see the shaft feeding through the hull and into the engine coupler. And there are no visible splines showing on the yoke shaft, which tells us that that shaft is all the way in and flush inside the engine coupler. And again, that O-ring serves absolutely no purpose for our setup. Back inside of the workbench, and hey, real quick. I do want to show you our exact Quicksilver OEM anode replacement kit. We are going to replace the entire anode kit and set, followed by re-greasing all of the grease ports prior to putting the boat back in the water. And down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, will be a few links on where to purchase this grease gun and the anode kit, as well as video links on how to replace your entire anode set and grease your ports or grease fittings. We hope this helps. Hey, do us a favor, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon, click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely ring your YouTube bell, that would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.